Tom Mesereau has a unique perspective on this case. He successfully defended Michael Jackson against molestation charges back in 2005. Tom, good to see you. Good morning. Morning, Matt. Thank you for inviting me. I, I think we should mention right off the bat, you're not unbiased in this case. You, you know, based on the evidence you have seen come forward, <clears throat> especially in the preliminary hearing, you, you're not buying Dr. Murray's story, are you? I am not buying his story at all. I think he's guilty. I think he acted in a very reckless, uh, irresponsible way that caused Michael Jackson's death. Based on what you heard in that preliminary hearing, Tom, are you surprised that the defense in this case is not pushing harder for a plea bargain? Well, I'm not surprised in, because the defense did not really tip their hand at the preliminary hearing. They asked very few questions. They didn't call any witnesses. And I have to assume they have some experts and some witnesses ready to go that they think will be very helpful to them. We, we have an idea of one of their strategies. It might be that they're going to say that, look, you know, he was giving Michael Jackson propofil because Michael Jackson had a terrible problem with insomnia and that while Dr. Murray was out of the room, Michael Jackson administered the lethal dose of propofil fill himself. So if you're a defense attorney, do you like that strategy? Well, they've got to come up with something, and the evidence is pretty damning already. So I think they're just going to throw speculative ideas out to try and see if they can create reasonable doubt. I don't think it's going to work. And, and if you're the prosecution, you've got two very important questions about that strategy. First, you say, why were you using propofil in this setting anyway? It's not what it's intended for, correct? Well, every, every doctor I've talked to is shocked that propofol was in the home. They're also shocked that a cardiologist was using it in the home. And they're even shocked that, that the proper equipment and proper assistance was not there. Clearly, he was trying to stay involved with Michael Jackson at almost any cost. And he wanted to embark on this big tour. He thought it would be a great moment for him. And it backfired. And I think he acted horribly. And as a doctor, why would you leave a dose of propofil in an area where a client or a patient could get his hands on it? At the very least, that sounds negligent, doesn't it? It's, it's absolutely reckless. It, the, the drug does not belong in a home. I've talked to anesthesiologists. I've talked to neurosurgeons. I've talked to other physicians. I've talked to a very renowned pathologist. They were all shocked to hear that this was even in the home. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm saying propofol. I meant propofol. I apologize. Involuntary manslaughter. It, this type of homicide charge, Tom, is it easier for the prosecution to prove? Yes, it is. It's not a charge of first or second degree murder. I've heard that there was tremendous debate in the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office over whether to charge second degree murder or involuntary manslaughter, and involuntary manslaughter won out. It's easier to prove. Uh, I think they've already got the evidence to prove it, and I think they will. And, and put your defense attorney hat on, me, on, on for a second, Tom. If you are defending Conrad Murray, do you put him on the witness stand? I think he's going to have to get on to explain why propofol was in the home and why he did what he did. Uh, you never know. The defense may think that they can win the case on cross-examination, and, and cases are won on cross without clients testifying. But my sense is at this point, given what I know, they're probably going to have to have him testify. Tom Mesero. Tom, as always, nice to see you. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me. Appreciate it.